That was nasty. That was nasty. First time we get to look at Madden NFL 24. If you don't know who these players are sitting in the chairs, well, we encourage you to tune in to the MCS season because on one side we got our defending Madden Bowl champion, the two-time belt winner, Dez. And on the other side we got one of the most popular players in the game and somebody who's very good in the booth as well. It is none other than Clef the God. And to my left, we have Madden designer Spade hanging out with us. Uh, we got to do this last year remotely. We now get to do it in person, Spade, from, from a perspective of a designer. How much fun is this time of year as everybody is so excited to get Madden NFL 24? It's, it's crazy fun, man. It's, it's a long cycle. A lot of hard work goes in and it's a very exciting moment to get a chance to see players finally get their hands on the game and get a chance to see that hard work pay off. Well, we already started off with a touchdown, so we should probably let people know what we're doing here. Uh, these guys playing uh, just a regs game here. Dez rocking the Chiefs. Clef is rocking the Bills. They're playing on all pro on one side. Clef is using the Broncos playbook and Dez is using the Bengals playbook. So we're going to see a little bit of everything here today. Has man press been tuned down? Because my first play, you know, he was man press and I just threw a fade. And Diggs just cooked him off the line. Hey, before I could even talk about it, you, you got right into it. But obviously, if you watch NFL football, that is not the way the game is played. So we went through and we tuned press chances, especially if you got a good receiver. Um, don't mean that you can't press. You still can press in spots, but we want to make sure personnel matters. And if you're walking a defensive back to the line to press a receiver, uh, you should care about who you got there. Like the fear that it could go to a big play is what we wanted to create this year. So what you're saying is if people were hoping to press on Stephon Diggs every play, they're probably not going to have a whole lot of fun defensively. Better have a safety over the top. It's not going to be fun. Well, that sort of ties into, you know, you talk about all the data that you guys got, the feedback you got from the beta. Man coverage is one of those things that people were talking about in the beta. Talk to me how important that feedback was from just a short time ago. Immensely. Like, the feedback we get from our players is so important to us because with all the testing that we can do, we can't replicate the testing of thousands and thousands of players. So our beta, we saw more players in our beta this year than ever before. We got more feedback in that beta than ever before. And man coverage being OP, man press being OP, these were things that our players called down there. And we, we took a tuning pass to adjust that because of the feedback we got. And that's the important thing to always remember is not just this game improving year over year, but even in such a short time from Absolutely. beta to now, it, it's changed a lot. It could potentially be more tuning passes. As the game lives, we want to be in tune with our players and we want to be able to react swiftly if we can. It's, it's the, the faded two words, live service. That's what it live is, right? Live service, the gift. I see that play right there. We saw some of the new locomotion in the game. Um, those rat catches and, and passing to the flats and drag routes. It seems like the, it's just a whole lot smoother. They're not losing speed on those plays. Yeah, a big effort went into allowing receivers to maintain their momentum. Uh, I think if you've played this game before, you've experienced a very frustrating moment where you see a receiver that's beat a defensive back. Wow, that's one of the new mid-air uh, catch Collisions, tackles yeah. there. But uh, you see a situation where the receiver beats the defensive back and as you throw it, he slows down to make the catch. The defender does not slow down, and it's a very frustrating moment. So a lot of effort went into allowing receivers to maintain their momentum. So these rack catches now, if you hit a receiver in stride, it's a beautiful play. It feels good. It's smooth, like you said, and off the time it leads to a, a very big game. It seems like these zones are reacting quicker. Like they're they getting to the ball way faster. Clef, you called it out. Like we, we tune zones. Um, Obviously, zone rating is important here, but if these players can see the ball, uh, we tuned it where they react faster. Not only did we tune it where they react to the ball faster, uh, we made them more aggressive. In the past, oftentimes, if they were behind, if they were positioned behind the receiver, uh, they were told to play the receiver. But this year, certain players, we're telling them to be more aggressive and play the ball. And the result is you're seeing guys fly down, make interceptions. You're seeing them make uh, tackles at the catch point, and you're seeing a lot more knockouts as a result of it. And so as a franchise guy where, you know, ratings are, are, are the be-all, end-all, mm -hmm. if I have a guy with a higher zone rating, he's going to react faster than somebody with a lower zone rating? Absolutely. I mean, and you'll be able to see it. Like, this is not something you'll need to go back and, and Time examine it up to see with the a microscope. Yeah. yeah, you'll see it. Just another thing to look for when we, when we go into those draft classes. Find, find the high zone guy so that they'll react. And there's one of those knockout animations those we're new, seeing. Absolutely. Uh, and that was a high pass, too. So I want to talk briefly about that. High pass was something that was used a lot. 
it was a meta last uh, cycle as well, and and we wanted to. Um, it was the meta everywhere, not it was just meta but franchise. Everywhere. It was everywhere. We attacked it from a few different angles. Uh, for one, you now have a chance of throwing an inaccurate pass when you attempt a high pass. Uh, that's on the passing side. On the catching side, if the receiver has to contort his body in a weird way to make the catch, he can just drop it because he's contorting weird. Uh, so we uh, addressed it on the catching side, and it's a lot more animation content where defensive backs can't hit uh, receivers while they're in the air jumping. So well, even on, even on that drop those. touchdown, that was something that I think last year was probably caught most of the time because oh, they'd sure. get hit in that midair and they just sort of come down with it. Sure. Now that ball's getting pried free. And depending on ratings, he could have still hung on to it, but you're seeing new animation content. You're seeing these guys be able to interact with these receivers going up for the ball. I got to ask Clef, how does moving with Josh Allen out of the pocket feel? It feels amazing. It's one of the first things I noticed is just how much I can get outside the pocket and still be accurate on the run. We just saw, I think, some new messaging on there at the bottom. It said high throw drop. So he talked about, A, there's a chance, you know, he was kind of in coverage there, so right. making that high catch was going to be tough. But it's going to tell you if your receiver just straight up dropped the ball and it wasn't deflected. It was just a drop. Absolutely. Just giving you as much feedback as possible. We're going to tell you whether or not the pass was accurate or not, and then we're going to tell you the result. Des, does this feel somewhere in between, you know, Madden 22 was the year of the escape artist. Mm. Madden 23, it felt like they were, it was the year of putting that escape artist uh, back into the jail cell so they can't escape. Does this feel like somewhere in the middle, Des, as you're scrambling with, with Patrick Mahomes? Because it seems more fluid, but not quite as OP as it was in 22. Oh, it feels perfect. I feel like it's just the right balance where, like, the defense, the defense can still catch up to him, but at the end of the day, it's Patrick Mahomes, it's Josh Allen. Like, they're going to make their plays at the end of the day. So I'm really liking, like, the balance right now. Oh, jeez. All right, this, I, I think we're going to get Clef to call a little, little PA slot cross. This was a meta play of all meta plays. Mm -hmm. And it was, you got took advantage of the defense because of how the flip worked. Talk to me how it's different this year. Yeah, so we would see our players uh, run this play, flip it, and instead of the players crossing field, you just would give that route, that seam route, you would give it to the receiver. And the receiver if you had some speed end. over there, uh, it gave defenses fits. Uh, and it was a, a rather easy fix. That we just said, if you're going to flip the play, we're going to make the tight end cross the field. He's going to keep his route. And, and uh, our, our video game defensive coordinators are going to sleep a whole lot better because of that change. Just all your PA slot cross tight end fans got some bad news for you. You're not going to be able to just manipulate that so the wide receiver gets the gets the route you wanted. And you can already see the difference here, even just like in sort of a, a stock adjusted defense. Oh my the God. coverage was a lot better downfield. Mm -hmm. I really like that change too because it takes away just just one of the quick hike. You know, everyone complains about the quick hike, snap, yep. audible. It takes away one of the op most OP plays. And there you go. There's one of the, those zones dropping back. That was a play I think you were looking at a year or two ago. That ball would sail over his shoulder. Or you wouldn't, you, unless you were clicked on, you weren't making a play on that one. Yeah, obviously, you know, when we're talking about a new game, I think we tend to, to steer towards talking about the offensive changes because mm -hmm. there, there are players want to do. They want to go score points. Well, but cool. I think it's important that – you know, the word I think you keep bringing up, and I think you're going to hear a lot throughout this video, is balance. It's, it's for every offensive ad, we're giving something defensively that gives them a chance to counter that. Right. And, and once the game gets in the hands of our players and they get a chance to lab, at some point, offense or defense is going to swing the pendulum in their favor. But it's a, it's a very tough job for us to try to balance, but we really put a lot of time and effort into trying to make sure there's something that counters everything. Good knockout. Great knockout. Yeah, they're breaking on that fast. Yes, sir. One thing I'm noticing from uh, from this year to last year is how they, the the cornerbacks and the safeties that don't really need knockout abilities to break on the ball, get knockouts. Obviously, last year knockout was probably one of the. You could make the argument that it was the most important. I, I, th ability. I think most would say it was the I, most I, important ability. You could definitely without make a doubt. that argument. And whereas players with knockout are still going to knock out more passes this year, it's not a necessity. If a player is there and he is there in time to make a play, he should have a, a chance yeah. to knock the ball out, especially depending you know, on the catching traffic rating of the receiver. Boy, it does feel like, uh, as, we're, as we're getting to see a little bit of those run plays, if you're at home, we're talking about the, the catch animations, those catch windows. If you're up at home and you're like, I'm a runner, okay? I, I want to tote the ball. I want to pound the rock. The new and improved blocking schemes, I think, makes running a, a viable offense. For sure. Especially here in 24. 
Yeah, a lot of improvements went into run. You're going to see some new uh, pool blockers if you want to run toss and, and those plays to get you outside. But I think the thing that I'm most excited about is our targeting. Like in the past, we had an issue where blockers would try to determine where the running back wanted to go. And that led to them just being it's bad guess unpredictable. Yeah, yeah, like I, you didn't know where they was going to go. This year, they're just very decisive. They, they get it in the open field. They target who they want to block and they get action. Mm. Oh, no. So just one uh, one also uh, one thing I also noticed pretty mainly is that last year there was a real big problem with like receivers bumping off their routes, and uh, you know just random things would happen. Right now I'm seeing just really fluid routes. People like my receivers aren't really getting bumped off their like their patterns, and I'm really liking that honestly. Yeah, <laughs> effort went into that too. It's crazy. I didn't know if that would be noticed, especially considering it's that first game, but. Uh, that's a real frustrating point for a user because everything like that that you see, it feels like illegal touching, or illegal holding, or a PI is something. You're looking like, man, what's happening to my receiver? So some effort went to letting those guys resolve that bump faster and get them back into his route. It seems like when I pass commit, I'm getting like super, not super animations, but like I'm getting a, a much better pass rush animation. Like they're really trying to rush the passer rather than just sit there and, you know, play patty cake with it. Yeah, if you pass commit, especially on these play action plays, you are basically canceling out your defensive line or your pass rushers, even considering the fact that it's a run. They're going to go right into that pass rush assignment, which is going to allow them to shed blocks a, a bit faster. So I don't know if going to that play action is yeah. going to be the move this year. Well, you saw right there, a, a defender behind the receiver went for a swat instead of playing the receiver, which is so refreshing to it see. It is, man. It is. It's so many times in the past I felt like if I didn't click on and do something, nothing happened. And that's a frustrating moment as well. Gregory Russo making the play. They're former Miami Hurricane. You know it. I'm sorry. I had to give you a shot. I knew you were a Miami oh fan. So. Got gotcha. Great. I appreciate it. Beautiful there. Got a high pass there, but again, uh, able to react to that receiver on the spot and knock that ball out. One also feels like when you're seeing the drops in those collisions, like it feels warranted. It feels Cause appropriate. Because you, you had some of those drops last year where it would just be like a pretty light collision, they'd right. still drop it, or the push from behind collision. Now you're seeing these big hits prying the ball free, and it feels like, okay, I understood why my receiver didn't hold on to that one. Yeah, it feels appropriate. And again, I keep going back to this. It looks like football. At yeah. the end of the day, we just want this game to look and feel like football. One of the things to, I think, take a note of as we're going through this game and we're seeing these guys, you know, obviously these guys haven't labbed up what they're going to be playing this year. They're, they're going around is, is a lot of credit to the playbook team because last year, yeah. big cut down in plays. Mm -hmm. This year, it feels like we've added a bunch of plays and there's a lot of new looks out there. Every single team uh, just got more content added in. Like you brought up last year was an uh, effort to reduce playbooks, try to get some of the clutter out. Uh, some players were not happy with that reduction. And uh, that was like nasty. You said, the playbook team came back. That might be something new as well. Oh, that was nasty. Out. We're talking about playbooks. We have the fake reverse jet sweep to the house. But yeah, that playbook team went crazy, man. Every single team has uh, new stuff in it. And well, you I, get think a I think Clef's going to get the game and be like, all right, I got to lab against this oh, wide definitely. receiver power fake jet. Like I, was, I went cross out right there. I didn't know, you know <laughs> where the ball was going. We had some people going left, right. That was, that was crazy. I mean, that, by the way, that is quintessential uh, NFL football these days. So much misdirection yep. out there because these, these defensive players are so fast and powerful. You have to make them at least look the wrong Gotta way. Got to fool them. As we just saw there, like, I'm really liking, like, just the creativity in this game. I remember, like, last in MCS, I was, like, the only one running. Like, I ran, like, tight end jet sweeps and stuff, so I love stuff like that, honestly. Oh, that's dope. Seeing stuff like that. I definitely think the stuff that's been done in playbooks this year, I would not be surprised to see some off-meta stuff. You're going to see yeah. somebody in, in a Makes playbook runs. running some stuff you have flat out never seen work or never seen even wow. be ran. We got we toss, toss plays, plays working now. working in Madden again? Couldn't have queued it up any better. Toss plays. Like I said, the run game, this open field targeting is something that you can feel instantly. You're going to pick the control up. You're going to call a run play, and you're going to see those offensive linemen get in action. It feel like they're not just running to, you know, empty grass. Like, they actually get to the next level and climbing and, and, mm -hmm. and blocking people. They definitely are. Now, I don't know if that was call, the same play. Call, call this play again. I was about to say. Now, let's talk about real-time AI adjustments. Uh, this is something that if the same run play is ran a number of times, and that number is going to vary depending on what difficulty you're on, but if you're running the same play over and over and over, Look what you're going to see. Look at that linebacker, the run fit shot the gap exactly. on the outside. 
Defensive players in the run gap, I mean, in run fit, what you're going to see these guys do is they're going to leave read and react a lot faster. They're just going to shoot their gaps. Now, that doesn't mean it's going to be a tackle for a loss. It doesn't mean that they're going to always blow the play So it's up. not like 1988 games where, like, you ran the same play three times, automatic TFL. Right. But what you're going to see is the difference in their behavior. You're going to see how quick they shoot the gaps. So it does feel like that does allow some of the more – chess player play callers mm -hmm. to set it up, run in some inside zone, some of those those inside A-gap runs, mm -hmm. then hit them with a toss play. It, it would be beautiful, and that's what we want. We want to open up the playbook. We want players to feel more confident running other plays. That's a nice oh, play. I think that's going to be a good man beater, just running running with the quarterback. Look at Dawson Knox. Pumping the, up the crowd. Yeah, I was about to say the post-play team went crazy, too. You're going to see... Not only new celebrations, we had new ce celebrations every year, but the thing that they did this year that I really like, just emotion. And if I'm not mistaken, I look on the left side because I feel like oh, he Dicks fried, Dicks him, fried him. Oh, my God. He fried. He like, Coach, I'm wide open. See Throw me the ball. Ooh, I think we're going to see some of the improved downfield blocking here. A little slip screen action. Look at, look at the 62. offensive lineman. The offensive lineman is down the field and not just creating a convoy. And getting the action. Like getting in the field and getting down the field to get action. I love it. I think one thing I'm already noticing that's really improved is the just the offensive line IQ, honestly. Like you just saw him right there. He picked up. Last year, like he was just, a lot of the time, he would just whip on that block and really made screens unrunnable. So I'm really liking that right now. I'm going to record that clip and take it back to the guys that work on blocking those guys. <laughs> Man, they got a hard job. I don't envy them at all, but wow. they put a lot oh, of work in this zone year. And that's Trey White, too. In the zone. I think his zone range is actually pretty high in this game. I, I think could be wrong. High. It's not I bad. I think it's pretty high. And last year, and years past, like, you had to really play with zone drops on. That right there is like, that's no zone drops. That's just him, you know, having awareness and IQ. Look at this. This is a stock. This is a default zone. Like, this never, I'm telling you in, this past, in the past, this never happened. Like, he never get this much depth. And then play this, this is a crosser. Y'all did a good job of movement. I think all of this, I think zone's playing better because of movement. Because last year, any other year before, before next gen, like, this dude would take so long to get to this ball. Yeah. He never gets this. Yeah. Even if he was this deep, this no, still would be a completion. Like he or he's getting nagged for it. Yeah, or he'll be able to fit it in this little window right here between them. But, like, the movement just so much better. I like from this view, you can see how quick he reacts to right. this throw. Like, he is reacting. He sees it. Oh. See, this is my type of matter when I can play zone. Look at the safety react to that, too. Wow, casual players. The guys that just, you know, we play a, a time or two a week. Maybe they're not as well-versed as zone drops and all the other good stuff. If they got good players in zone in position yeah. to make plays, they should be able to make plays. Yeah, Clef, let's see, like, on this play, uh, uh, like a 10-yard dig route and uh, let's see, like, a cover three defense because I want to see how those linebackers react. Because uh, in years past, this is, this is a money play. Throw that dig right behind the linebacker, and unless you're clicked on, it's probably completed. I want to see how those linebackers react here. Look at him drop back and make the play. I mean, I love it. You love to see that. That's on defense. A lot of work went into it, man. So kudos to the coverage team. They got these guys playing a lot better. You got to be smarter when you slinging the pigskin this year. Oh my! A little God. separation. Oh my God. And you get a chance to see some of that momentum. Like Diggs never slows down, never has to slow down. So those lead, you know, those pass lead, we tune pass lead in a bit so you can lead a bit more now. Mm -hmm. So just being able to lead a receiver on a go route. It looks like, and you'll see it here, you're not seeing the up back coming up and catching the ball. You're actually seeing the returner. Who thought we'd be sitting here talking about special teams? But uh, special teams was really massaged this year. New formations on regular kick return, a uh, new onside kick formations and uh, onside kick return formations. So like you just alluded to, a lot of people do the scum kick. They probably kick it to you once and see if you really got skills. And if so, is that the why they keep kick kicking it to me the deep? They're like, this dude is not, <laughs> he's not returning. That might be why, Nick. But yeah, like you said, the blocking is going to set up and, and the actual returner is going to come up and make the kick. So I might so be able to house a kick that, you that, just made. that was kicked short. Someone is going to scum kick and it's going to get uh, taken to the house. I'm calling it now. Oh, oh, the drop off the high pass into Jordan Poyer's hands. And I don't think, I could be wrong, I don't think Jordan Poyer has some, like, pick artist on him. So you're seeing him able to make an open field interception without the ability. 
Yeah, our players are gonna have to. Some of them are gonna have to reprogram themselves because high pass was so much the so thing to do. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you kind of do it without thinking about it. So you got to be careful. You got to pick your spots. It, it's interesting. This does feel like a game with a lot of the changes. There's a lot of habit breaking that's going to have to happen because Big time. we we've been overcompensating for certain things that you know worked maybe a little differently than than you guys wanted it to. Yep. Now you've spent some time tuning it, and people are going to have to change how they played. Absolutely, in office, I still walk people to the line and I press, and it, it takes once for me to get beat and go, okay, I got right, maybe I should. Yeah, I got to remember. It's important for us to mention too. Obviously, escape artists gave a lot of us headaches, few nightmares. Uh, in 23, we made an effort to make scrambling quarterbacks stay in the pocket a bit more. Oh, Bill's got it back. So in 24, we wanted to make sure that scrambling quarterbacks and mobile quarterbacks felt mobile. Even yeah. if you're not scrambling, the way that Clef is getting out the pocket, he's not necessarily scrambling, but he's able to get out of the pocket and make plays. But at the same time, uh, Dez could contain, and that contain is going to pretty much keep him from being able to just run around. I mean, look and at the end, keep, keep Allen in right there. Absolutely. Yeah, but, you know, you know, Clef just finds... It's Gabriel Davis down the field. I mean, he's Clef the, He's not called Clef the Mortal. He's Clef the God. Just want to let you know, though, you're not going to be able to screenshot this and be like, see, I beat Dez, and I'm 1-0 against him in Madden 24. Okay? I'm 1-0. See, you got it's how you start. It ain't always how you finish. They it's how you start. It's, it's only how, how you start. start. It's <laughs> only how you start. You know, we start off 1-0. Maybe. This is where Dez should have brought his belts here, just, like, laid them out and be like, ah! <laughs> Reminder, guys, if you're, if you're wanting to compete, if you want to... Maybe match up with one of these guys. $1.7 million on the line in the MCS season this year. Registration is now open. The ultimate kickoff. First tournament of the season, September 5th and 6th. So make sure you sign up today. You never know. But let's be clear. We didn't know this man Dez last year. And all he did was show up and win two belts. So if you're out there going, I don't have a chance to do this, uh, you, you don't know that until you sign up. I'm running this cover two invert, and I see my safety. Like, how he's getting to the sideline. He's not, like, strafing. He's like... You know what I'm saying? He's kind of running over there to yeah. the top of the screen. It's it's he's not call. strafing, but he's also not sprinting. It's somewhere sprinting in the middle. Yeah, somewhere. so it's a new loco type. You're going to see these guys do read steps first, and then you're going to see them go in the crossover run. So, Clef, that's a great call out because he's not in strafe, but he still has his hips turned. He can run, but he's still facing the quarterback. And this is, again, this is authentic to the sport. You mm -hmm. see these guys, they don't just turn around and just run to a spot. Well, it's nice oh. to see because I think if, mm. if you're using and you hold both triggers, it does the same thing. Absolutely. We're now seeing the CPU able to do that as well. Yep. And this is something that, again, people are going to have to reprogram themselves. In the past, if you was on strafe and you held sprint, you just strafed still. Yeah. But this year, if you're holding both triggers, you're going to turn that your hip. Crossover, yeah. yeah, you're going to cross over this year. Mm, I'm not going to lie. I've seen, I've seen Dez run some RPOs. RPOs are kind of dangerous here, especially with that improved blocking. Mm. Uh, I don't know. It's a scary year. If you're, if you're thinking about RPO, running some RPO as your offense, this might be the year to do it early. I think it's a great year to see just how much of a chess match this sport is. Mm -hmm. If you want to mix in pass, run, RPO, a little bit of QB sneak here and there, you can just keep the defense guessing. I'm seeing a lot of new, like, tackle animations. Mm -hmm. is, there, is there new tackling techniques in the game? Yeah, all right, so, Nick, you're going to hate this, but conservative tackle has been replaced. No! Yeah, I know. I, I'm not going to accidentally mess up my tackle again. I'm, oh, I'm out, guys. I knew you were going to have that reaction, but conservative tackle has been replaced with wrap tackles. It's still pressing A or X, depending on what console you're on, but you're going to see these guys try to wrap up the ball carrier, and the outcome is going to vary depending on speed, strength, uh, size, and I say speed of the ball carrier. If mm. they're moving at low speed, you're going to see different animations. So you'll see defensive backs wrap up legs because that's authentic to the sport. You'll see these big guys hit a ball carrier up high and drive them backwards. Oh. Mm. Mm. Tight window throws. They're possible in this game, especially with, the good, with, especially with the good quarterbacks. That's a coverage sack cover right sack. there. He's sitting in the pocket, and it, does, it doesn't feel like they have six, seven, eight seconds to throw right. the ball. The pass rush has certainly been tuned. Right, but it's also not that, you know, as soon as you drop back, it's, it's not unfun. Standing. Exactly. So there's one of those play actions in a situation you probably weren't running the ball. It's shotgun right. play action on first and ten. Right. I don't know if it was a pass commit done there, but that's exactly the behavior you can expect to see if you pass commit on a play-action pass. 
Okay. Look at him back off the press on Stephon Diggs. <laughs> Des, like, no, nah, nah, dude, not <laughs> happening again. I don't care that there's 50 seconds left. You're not getting another lesson, one man. on me. I learned my lesson. All right, so maybe George Carlos might be great. I might be. He's, he's having a day. I mean, what a game. Two of the best battling it out. First game of Madden 24. Uh, and, guys, before we get out of here, I'm curious. You've gotten to play the game, full 20 minutes of gameplay. Clef, I'm going to start with you. What's the biggest change you felt or saw between last year and then your first try here at Madden 24? Um, I'll say catching, everything around catching. You know, just the animations are a thousand times better. It makes you more comfortable with throwing a check down and also letting the computer check it, uh, catch it for you. You don't have to swerve your way into an animation. All the animations feel good and they feel fluid. Des, how about you? Uh, it's got to be like the playbooks. I mean, there is, there is like every single formation I call a game, like I feel like I called every formation. There was about two or three looks that I liked in every single one of them. Uh, so many things they added that I liked. The fake jet sweep that I hit, uh, hit him with, like, it was, it's all sick. I, I can speak for everybody, Spade, uh, that we're excited for Madden 20. We appreciate you hanging out with us. And, Thanks for having me. Uh, cannot wait for this game to come out because it feels like, you know, we, we say it every year that every game is different, but you guys put in a lot of work to make this game feel very different from 23. A ton of work. Uh, thanks for having me for one, but obviously I want to thank the players because we watch so much of the, the game plays, everything from YouTube videos to streams and MCS games, and we get a chance to see how our players play the game, and that allows us to know what needs to be tweaked, tuned, massaged, and changed, and really excited about what we was able to do here on Madden 24, and I can't wait for our players to get it. Yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. If you want to get your hands on Madden 24, make sure you pre-order the game now. Worldwide launch is August 18th. You're not going to want to miss out on this one. And a reminder, guys, make sure you subscribe and turn on notifications because we got plenty more content from the gaming side coming out here. Lots of Madden 24 content. So stay tuned, and we can't wait for the release of Madden 24.